Alright guys, we are back for the championship roundup today, bringing it out a day later than usual as we did have that Monday night game going on, but we also have a game going on in the championship tonight as well. We will be previewing that in the second half of today's video, but make sure to go ahead and drop your score predictions down below for that Blackpool against Huddersfield matchup. Massive game in at the bottom of the championship. We've got loads of talking points to digest in today's video though. As always, do get your thoughts in the comments down below. And without any further ado, let's jump into this one. And starting out at the Hawthorns with West Brom up against Coventry. West Brom taking advantage with that Diane Garner goal. It was a little bit of a throwback the way in which that goal came about. You know, those massive long throwing, something that we associated with this West Brom squad, particularly throughout that Valor and Ishmael tenure when they scored, you know, quite a few of those uh, from those sort of situations. And it was West Brom who started out this game on top, albeit Coventry did have a fantastic chance themselves to take the lead, but Gukarez uh, fired wide after having the ball cut back across to him. Coventry just firing a few blanks at the moment across all competitions. That's now just one win from their last eight matches. They are one of several championship clubs who are experiencing a little bit of a slide at the moment. For West Brom, it was a good three points. What's interesting about their situation at the moment is I'm sure that a lot of West Brom fans are a little bit cautious about the Leeds United news with Jesse Marsh losing his jobs and giving Carlos Corbran and his previous ties with Leeds and how well he's doing at the moment. It's no surprise to see he's one of the front runners for that job at the moment. After that we had Burnley putting three goals past Norwich, 3-0 away at Cowra Road. Now coming into this game I've been really impressed with what I've seen from Norwich under David Wagner and I really thought they'd give Burnley a run for their money in this one but Vincent Company's side are just showing levels in the championship at the moment and that's what they're all about at the moment. They were helped by that massive Tim Krull mistake early on to give the ball to Zorore and um, him putting Burnley 1-0 in front. The goalkeeping situation at Norwich is quite an interesting one as well. I was under the impression that Angus Gunn was actually doing fairly well um, under Dean Smith, but obviously Wagner came in, made that change in goal, went for Tim Krull instead, so it will be interesting to see if that reversal is made once again, because obviously they've sort of shared uh, the minutes in that number one spot so far this season. From a Norwich perspective, to have given that first goal away to Burnley, the way in which the second and third come about are also really disappointing. Burnley create a heap of chances from open play, so what you need to do against them is be tight from set piece situations. From two quite cleverly taken corner routines, Burnley get their second and third goal and at that point this game's done and dusted. Uh, I will be at Burnley over the weekend as well to watch them up against Preston next. I'm expecting a hell of a tough game in that one. And Rotherham just keep proving me wrong at the moment. They managed a 0-0 draw with Sheffield United over the weekend. It's now five points from their last three matches. Three really quite tricky looking matches on paper as well with games against Blackburn, Watford and Sheffield United but I thought the Millers handled this game really quite well actually. Really promising debut from Jordan Hugel as well. Thought he um, led the line really well for Rotherham in this one. Won 9 of his 13 aerial duels in this game. Was absolutely dominant in that sense. And I think that given the way Rotherham like to play, I think Hugel will be a really popular player um, down there in no time and I think that given the fact that Hugel brings so much more to this Rotherham side than just a goal threat. I think that will massively help them out for the second half of this season. In terms of Sheffield United, they did have the majority of the ball in this one, but in terms of the clear-cut chances, I thought Rotherham did a really good job of limiting this Sheffield United side, who have scored plenty throughout the season so far. Given the fact that the fixtures do take a little bit of a flip for Rotherham next up, and they do start to ease up a little bit with games against Blackpool and Reading to come, and an out-of-form Coventry side, yeah, this unbeaten run could be extended for a few weeks longer for Rotherham, like what I'm seeing from them at the moment. After that we had Huddersfield playing at a 1-0 draw with QPR, two sides who aren't in a great moment at the moment and definitely could have done with all three points, so it was typical that they played out this 1-0 draw. Was QPR who took the lead through Jamal Lowe, some quite suspect defending from a Huddersfield point of view, but Lowe still had plenty to do when the ball fell to him at the far post. Do think he'll be a positive signing for QPR for the remainder of the season. They just look a little bit short in some other areas of the pitch. In terms of Huddersfield, they did well to get back into this one waghorn off the mark just before half time in a Huddersfield shirt and to be fair they probably looked the more likely side to go on and win this game in the second half albeit QPR had that golden opportunity when Armstrong massively overhit that pass to chair and a little dink to him 
to square it to him and maybe QPR going to win this one. It's now eight without a win for QPR across all competitions. Critchley needs to find the winning formula sooner rather than later. And the same could probably be said for Huddersfield, but we'll discuss them later in the video when we preview that massive game they've got against Blackpool. Gotta say that Liam Rossini has done a miraculous job since coming in at Hull City. Now 12th in the league after this brilliant run that they've been on since the Christmas period. In fact, since Christmas, Hull would be fifth in the championship based on the points they picked up between then and right now which speaks to the level of consistency they're playing at at the moment. In terms of Cardiff it's a quite grim picture actually. 11 games without a win. They're on the longest winless run in the championship as things stand currently with Blackpool as well. 11 games without a win and they had the perfect opportunity to get going in this game with that penalty in the first half. Well won by Philogene Bidens and I mean I absolutely love Callum Robinson. You guys on the channel know this but he's never been the most prolific of penalty takers think that now is his second penalty miss of the season actually for Cardiff to be fair it wasn't the worst penalty in the world and I actually think that Ingram does really well to get down to it as fast as he does and Ingram himself you know been one of the best goalkeepers in the championship this season but from that point onwards missing the penalty the confidence just drains from Cardiff from there and Hull really go ahead and capitalise on that in the second half. Cyrus Christie who looked like a constant threat on that right hand side after the match I looked into the average positions of the whole players and Christie really high up on that right hand side almost playing as a right midfielder and um, given his average position does really well to take his goal 1-0 hole and that's enough to win this game ultimately another game where Cardiff haven't scored and given the games in hand that those teams in the relegation zone have on them at the moment they're in a particularly dangerous position after that we had Luton beating Stoke by one goal to nil Luton just continuing to roll out the wins at the moment they're now up to fourth in the championship and are looking on course for a top six finish come the end of the season in terms of Stoke this has been the frustrating point with them all season really to have come off that high of that 4-0 win in the championship last time against Reading to then not be able to follow up in the following week and that's been the sort of highs and lows that they've bounced between all season. They do still have a fair few players to integrate into this side. I'm particularly interested to see how the likes of Twan Zabi and Ben Pearson impact this Stoke squad. Certainly think they bulk up the spine of that team and make them um, a lot more competitive in that area. But losing the going well at the moment. It was a fine strike from Mpanzu from outside the box on the six minute mark which gave Luton all three points. A couple of decisions did go against Stoke. They did have the ball in the back of the net. That one was ruled out for a foul on the keeper and apart from that weren't really able to craft out all too many clear cut opportunities here after that we have Middlesbrough beating Blackpool by three goals nil. Some really high quality goals scored in this one. Schuber Akbom is the informed man in the championship right now. The coolness of that first goal was absolutely spectacular. Sort of a chipped finesse shot into the far post. It was absolutely glorious and to be fair at 1-0 down Blackpool did have some openings to get back into this one. Bowler trying to create things and be busy on that right hand side. He set up uh, Yates to put the ball in the back of the net but he was just ruled offside he actually had another chance after that where he nodded one against the crossbar but ultimately Middlesbrough's quality showed in the second half thought that second goal was really well worked between McGree and Akbon and then Middlesbrough obviously killed it off with the set piece goal uh, that's been a particular weakness from Blackpool's point all season defending from those set piece situations loving pretty much everything I'm seeing about this Borough squad at the moment from a Blackpool perspective they've really got no time to feel sorry for themselves after this one because they immediately go into this midweek game against Against Huddersfield where absolutely everything is on the line if they lose that game it could be lights out for them for a survival push this season if they win that game then suddenly it's back on Next so then to the then for Millwall playing at a one-all draw with Sunderland. Do feel as if that's a decent point on the road there for Sunderland, particularly with how this game went about. It was certainly Millwall who had the better of that first 45 minutes with the better chances as Sunderland struggled to craft out much for themselves. George Honeyman, the former Sunderland man, was in the mood, especially to get on the score sheet against his former side in this one. Did have the ball in the back of the net for that first half, but due to a very marginal offside call for I think George.
George Savile in the build up to this one. That goal was ruled out. Millwall continued to push for the remainder of the half. Ultimately, Cooper gave them the lead just into that second half before the hour mark. What's been sometimes a little bit of a critique of Millwall under Gary Rowett is their tendency to sit off a little bit when they do get into that leading position. And had they continued to press Sunderland in this one, maybe they would have grinded out that all, all three points in this one. But Sunderland managed to get back into it. Set piece situation. Pritchard swings one in. Long comes for the ball. Doesn't get anywhere near it. And Serkin ultimately managed to get on the end of it and makes it 1-1 for a decent point on the road there, all things considered. Next then to Deepdale and another home defeat for Preston as Bristol City walk away with all three points. Bristol City done a really good job to turn around the fortunes there recently. Since the Christmas period, they've obviously worked in a few things, but I think what was most frustrating from a North End point of view coming out of this game was the fact that Bristol City didn't really need to click out of first gear to get all three points, and it feels like that same performance is being churned out at Deepdale week in, week out, and we're seeing no progression on that. It's now five consecutive defeats for North End in home matches, and something needs to be sorted on this sooner rather than later, because the pressure is starting to mount on low from that perspective of how bad the home form has actually been this season. It was a horrific mistake by Brady for that first goal, which allows Sykes to get in. The second goal from Bristol City actually quite well worked. Uh, Alex Scott picks out that long ball into Naki Wells. He pulls it back across for Bell to make it two for Bristol City. And while Preston did have chances in that first half, it was all very disjointed. In the end, we went for that forward three of Cannon, Evans and Delap, And to fit three sort of conventional strikers all into a forward three together was a little bit of a mismatch in the end. I think particularly for Delap, who struggled a little bit in this one. Second half, North End do get back into it. Evans, who's been our only real source of goals recently, pulls one back. But Bristol City were able to hold out for all three points and the frustration from the North End home crowd really boiled up after this one. Next then to Reading up against Watford. We mentioned in the preview to this one that Reading have always had a decent sort of bounce back ability, particularly when the but on the receiving end of quite a dismal performance. And that was certainly the case last time against Stoke, losing it 4-0. Things started out pretty tough in this one, though, against the Watford side, who themselves have been fairly unpredictable recently. Saar gives them the lead, and then Porteus just into the second half with that um, head to the effort coming in from the corner. Reading's comeback is then sparked in the 66th minute through a Tom Inns penalty. And I'd be interested to get some verdicts from both Reading and Watford fans on the penalty call itself. It was Shane Long, I think, the player who won on it does quite well to manoeuvre himself in the position just as the defender's going to go in for the ball. Obviously there is a bit of contact in there, Long goes down, the penalty's given, and that's enough to go ahead and spark Reading's comeback. It's a thumping effort by Jeff Hendrick in the end which goes ahead and gets Reading a point and the situation that Watford found themselves in, 2-0 up after 48 minutes, probably this one feels like more of a loss than a draw, but decent point there for Reading, all things considered, but I would be interested to get some takes on that penalty decision. After that, and to the game of the weekend, we had Birmingham 4, Swansea City 3. If ever there was a club in need of a result this weekend, it was Birmingham. Given the disastrous start they'd had to 2023, how they were continuing to drop down the championship like a stone and, you know, potentially end up in a relegation battle for the second half of the season. Perhaps this result will go ahead and prove to be a little bit of a springboard for Birmingham because it was desperately needed and in the end they managed to take advantage of a Swansea side who were looking quite fragile themselves at the moment. It was a game that had a little bit of everything, some great attacking play, some massive defensive blunders which both teams managed to capitalise on. From a Swansea perspective there were some positives to take from the goals they scored, Perot with a brace, Cullen with a goal as well. But defensively, they just left themselves so exposed to counter-attacks and set-piece situations, which Birmingham managed to capitalise on expertly. Djukovic with that 90th minute equaliser to make it 3-3, before Trusty put it in to make it 4-3 for Birmingham. It looked like limbs in the away end um, towards the end there. From a Swansea perspective, I think it's fair to say that Russell Martin has cut a pretty frustrated figure recently, and rightly so, I have to say, uh, given the disastrous end to the 
the transfer window that Swansea had, a result like this really just compounds where they are at the moment. And then the last of the matches we had going on saw Blackburn playing at a goalless draw with Wigan Athletic, this being Maloney's first game in charge. And overall, I think there were some pretty positive indicators of what came out of this game from a Wigan point of view, obviously. We all knew the mess that he was inheriting, but the reaction he got in terms of an overall performance for this one from a Wigan perspective, I think was pretty promise promising. A lot more energy about their performance. They managed to limit Blackburn to... Few, a fairly few amount of chances, uh, relatively speaking, and then going forward themselves, they also carried a little bit more of a threat than we have seen from them in recent weeks. Their next upcoming fixtures are going to be absolutely crucial, though, and they're going to need to build something on the back of this performance with games to come against the likes of Huddersfield, Bristol City, Norwich, and Preston. It's quite a varying degree of difficulty for their next four fixtures. From a Blackburn perspective, more real frustration around Ewood Park since the resumption in play from the World Cup break up until now, Blackburn would be 18th in the championship based on their form since the resumption from that point. They're not playing like a playoff outfit at the moment. I think that that frustration can be seen in the fan base and even in some of the players at the moment. But guys, there we have it. Those were all the matches we had going on in the championship over the weekend. Before we do wrap up, we do have a massive game to go ahead and preview, which is going on tonight. I want to get your guys' perspective on this one down below. Blackpool up against Huddersfield. This is an absolutely huge game for quite a few of the sides at the bottom of the championship. Both Huddersfield and Blackpool currently have two games in hand over Cardiff. If Huddersfield were to win this game, they'd leapfrog Cardiff, would go out of the relegation zone themselves and drop Cardiff in it. Blackpool would go level on points with the Welsh side should they win this one. And it's an absolutely massive game. Neither side is playing particularly well at the moment and so much has changed since they last played each other. All the way back in September, it was Blackpool who won the reverse fixture 1-0. Both teams had different managers back then, a different playing squad, and so I'm expecting quite a different and cagey game going into tonight. From a score prediction from me, I think I'm sitting on the fence if I'm honest. I'm going to go for an unhelpful 1-1 draw, but I want to get your guys' verdict down below. Apart from that though, guys, that will not wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Do get all your thoughts on your team's performance in the comments down below. But apart from that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.